hello, hello. This is Allison with Breezy Blessings. And I suppose I have to start with a full confession. This is the second time that I am videoing today because the first video I went to upload it, upload it and it somehow corrupted. So what I had videoed earlier is already completed as well as a little bit more. But I thought I would kind of continue to work on this project during this video while I gab. And so what I had done in the previous video is I had established the cover. As I had already talked about too, um, my desk has looked basically the same for the last week because, and I make no apologies for it, my family absolutely will always come first and you know well before creating anything so anyways i have not had very much time in the last several days in my craft room so i left my table looking the same way it has so if you follow my instagram at breezy blessings you saw that i have walked down nostalgia lane and looked up on the public domain some images from the Hershey Cho Hershey's Chocolate Factory, which is also connected then to Hershey Park, Pennsylvania, um, an amusement park there. So if you've ever been there, it's an amazing park. If you haven't been there and you live on the east coast of the United States, it's a wonderful place to take your family and go visit. The And I don't remember back when when I was a kid, the Hershey's Chocolate Factory was free, that tour part, and you can go in there and get chocolate, and there's a big store, and it's just super fun because it smells amazing, and it's just a fun thing to go do. So anyways, I had found all of these images, so a vintage image of their old trolley that led into the Chocolate Factory, and then a factory there, and some advertisements, an old receipt from there. This is an old-fashioned chocolate wrapper so that was really cool and then a couple more advertisements there that I'm going to incorporate and then I have just some regular scrapbook that matches to go and then of course this advertisement that I decided to put on the front along with some actual chocolate wrappers so these are like the um, wrappers that come on like Reese's peanut butter cups or yeah like small little Reese's peanut butter cups and those things. So I'm in the process of covering this, some might call it a flip-flop, but it's not really a flip-flop, more just like a flip no-flop. So anyways, I'm going to show you how I pieced together the envelopes and what I came up with. And in the video I recorded before that had I had actually been piecing it together during that so you could have seen it better so I'm gonna I decided to put this right there but I'm not gonna do that yet so I'm gonna show you basically it's a trifold on the inside so three envelopes there all the same size that one folds in on itself this one folds there and then I had to attach a small envelope on the back side so the middle envelope so that it folds over and Karana creates the cover. So I had concluded that it's called a trifold with a small cover. Yes. So it will allow a small signature to go here, open up to a large signature here, and then another signature here. That's the idea behind it. Did I do that correctly? Yes, like that. So anyways, I'm in the middle of covering it now. And so I just thought I'd take you along a little bit as I gab. So anyways, the last week, as I said, my family has had to take priority. And why is that? Well, my youngest is a golfer and he's actually entering college this month. So just in a few weeks, we'll couple weeks actually so today is the last day of July so we have through August 18th with him and then he will move in as a collegiate golfer which we're super excited for him about that was a goal of his and mission accomplished proud of that but he had a two-day tournament this last week 
that I was at. And then my oldest is a pharmacy major in his last year. I've mentioned that in previous videos, I know, but um, this particular month, so the month of August, he actually has off. So it's his final, mm, final year. And basically he's doing, they're called professional hours, advanced professional hours of some sort. I forget that what the acronym is exactly, but they're like rotations. So he's in a different specialty each month for nine months of the year. So basically a regular school year, but it's just scheduled differently. So he happens to be off the month of August and he's been staying in Cleveland, Ohio. So we live in Ohio and he's been in a hospital up there. So we were able to help him move back on Saturday, so a couple days ago, because his July rotation actually wrapped up early enough for him to be able to move back in the weekend. So that was a blessing, as well as, so follow that, I'm just like so grateful. God's so gracious. My heart, in this particular instance, moving my youngest out, in a couple weeks but my oldest moved back in for at least this month and he's actually as it would be local next month at a hospital so debating on this I think I'm gonna cover up that white I'm not against the white what should I do maybe put that there so back over here I ended up using that. I kind of like that idea. That would stick up over the edge a little bit and give it a little floof. So I have this paper that has like actual fibers in it. That is that are obviously fibers. All right, so I'm gonna rip some of that and work with it. So, anyways, as I was saying, I'm trading out sons. <laughs> the middle two are married, so they're not coming home. And then, actually, my youngest girlfriend, she lives out of state. So a long story for another time, but she is precious, and we love her very, very much. And so she is visiting currently, so we picked her up a couple days ago, and we've been spending time with her. And as it would be today, my son and she, and then another one of my married sons and his wife, so my daughter-in-law, are at an amusement park and we have a perfect day for that so I'm so grateful for that for them it's ideal and so hopefully they're enjoying themselves there so and my oldest son is that happens to be out with his our, his dad my husband so I get a little bit of crafty time in here and I just thought it would be fun to bring you along a little bit on this. So basically with these envelope based journals, I've found the easiest way is to just piece them together first, obviously with the envelopes, kind of determine if I want to leave an envelope open or not. Oh, this is not working very well, it's not sticking. I may have to reinforce with some glue with this. But then after I figure out what envelopes I want to leave open or if any, then I go ahead and that's a little bit too far. Hmm. I want to double layer it, what do we think? Give it a little extra floof. Hmm, in debate mode here. Or do I just try to rip it? Just kind of peel that off. I think peel it. Kind of roll it towards. Make it it's not sticky. Yes, I think that's what I'll do. For now, I'll probably change my mind on that. No, no, let's see what it looks like from the front. Oh, I like that. Floof, floof. I'm going to cut that off no matter what. So we'll do that. What do we think? I don't want to really cut. 
cover a whole lot. See what it would look like to do it like that. All right, let's go ahead and do it because we don't want any like weird sticky parts on here. All right, so I'm gonna cover that. It's the way it goes, right? Crafting, especially with junk journals, there are no rules. If you quote make a mistake. No mistake, because you can just fix it, and no one ever knows. Thomas. All right, so that it's already got a rough edge. Let's make it about the same width. Going on. Just cut that. I'll put that there. Make sure not to cover our words. Go. All right, so we've got all the sticky metal covered. Cut that end off and let's check it out. All right, so we've got a little bit of a layered fibrous floof there, and probably want to reinforce that down with a little bit of glue. So, anybody else stock up on glue this time of year? Y'all, I'm being just honest. I'm not thrilled about seeing all the back to school stuff this year. I just cannot keep up with all the changes in my brain and all these changes affect my heart too. Now, hear me. They're all amazing, praiseworthy things happening. I, I have so, so much to be grateful for. I'm constantly reminding my mind and heart that to think on what is praiseworthy and true and good about these seasons and almost everything in it is just praiseworthy and true so it's amazing and um so i cannot and am not complaining it's just a lot going on so i was a little bit like what when i saw the back to school stuff and the only thing that was like yay was stocking up on glue because it's a great time to go ahead and get the bulk packs so just determining here what I want to put so I've already covered that cover that so I've only got one more to cover and this is the only time I've used this one is here so I'm gonna go ahead and use it here what do we think yes that's what we're gonna do and which means I've decided to not leave any envelopes open, but that is entirely okay because I can create pockets to use just like envelopes. And honestly, leaving envelopes open isn't the easiest thing in the world. It, if you, specifically if you want to get this precisely cut, the easiest way I've found is to actually open up a, like a template envelope in order to get this exact cut on a piece of paper or cardstock, and then you use that to cover it. But I don't know. Do I feel like doing that right now? Probably not. I don't really. So I'm just going to show you just the real quick, easy cover. And the easiest way to do this that I have found is to. So that's not going to work because I use it on the front. So in order to use up the least amount of cardstock possible, because I'm always trying to salvage my cardstock as if I don't have a ton of it, but that's all right. Waste not, want not, right? So I'm going to just show you how I quickly cover things, I think, the easy way, because, oh, I have to cover all these too. All right, y'all, my brain... I can blame hormones. I can blame the amount of things on my brain, all of which are true. So just bear with me. But we're only going to cover this one for my purposes on this video because I don't want, I think it may have been the length of my last video that made it not work. So I'm going to keep this one kind of short and sweet. 
So if y'all are anything like me anyways, I don't really have time for an hour video or even a half hour video, really. I love y'all that come on and do those long videos for us and show us tutorials and so forth. But most of the time, I end up having to break it up. So, you know, like into segments. So, I'll just break it up for you by doing a smaller video. All right, so I'm reinforcing this one with the glue as well as the double stick tape. And then I'm going to, I'm going to bend this up this way so that I can get, oh my goodness, I'm putting it on the wrong side. Seriously, y'all, what's wrong with me? All right, so this is just going to go down into this, like that, making sure that it's definitely to the edge on this end. I'm just going to press it down, use a brayer, I'm, just, I'm using my... The name has escaped me. My little file folder thingy. Folder. What's it called? That's gonna bother me. Huh. All right. So then, in order to not have had to measure this out, now I just have my where to cut. So I'm just gonna come along here and easily just cut along the edge here. Making sure not to cut the envelope. Although if you do, again, not the end of the world. You come back and add cardstock to the side of it, to the edge of it, washi tape, whatever. Glue it back together. All right, so then we've got done this edge to trim off. And... And this side is covered. So that's all nice and covered there. Keep that for maybe later. And I'm happy with that. So we've got that. That's not, so I'm, I want to fold it this way. So I want to keep like training it that way so that the inside is folded correctly. All right. So that's the start of this Hershey's chocolate nostalgic journal. And I hope y'all are doing well. Something I was reflecting on this morning was this verse I was reading in 1 Timothy. And it says, he, meaning Jesus. So it says, he was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. It's 1 Timothy 3.16. And I just, I sat there and just parked on that verse and reflected on it and I just left me all struck. I, just that breakdown of Jesus and who he is, his glory, his purpose, God incarnate. He came to us because he loves us that much. And so I've been just really thinking on that all day and I hope that's just an awestruck thought to you as well an awesome thought to you that leaves you awestruck and I just want to share real quickly so I hope you all are doing well and that you are creating as well in order to be a reflection reflection of our creator I'll talk to you soon Bye.